Would you like to learn how to go from unknown to well-known so you can be seen as an expert, establish trust and authority, set yourself apart from your competitors and get paid more for your expertise? I'm Priya Florence Jha, award-winning publisher, author, podcaster and online branding consultant. In this channel, you learn how to create a personal brand that outlasts the next social media or search engine algorithm update. Sign up for my free personal branding email course below, subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell to get notified every time I post a new video. So today I'm interviewing Nelson Toriano, an educator, certified personal trainer and author. He started Coach Nelly Toriano LLC after determining financial literacy is needed in the fitness industry with his book for the fit but poor personal trainer a guide on how to train money, not muscle, to grow. He teaches prof fitness professionals financial literacy. The burnout rate in the industry is very high, and he intends on making a difference by teaching what to do, uh, what to do for sales revenue after the sale has been made. So that's a very interesting niche to be in, Nelson, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, and I think you found a great niche because... Not only is it required financial literacy for everybody, but I think in the fitness, fitness industry, people tend to overlook it, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So can you tell us a little more about your journey, how that started? How you got started? Sure. Absolutely. So I am based in Silicon Valley. Um, so I'm in the hub, uh, uh, the hotspot for all the tech companies um, yeah. here in the United States. And if you work with in technology, if you work anywhere, have any piece of technology in your home, you know, most likely the technology was based here. Um, so I fell into the industry for about, and I was working in the industry for about 10 to 12 years. Um, but my side hustle, my side job was teaching uh, group fitness classes and I was a personal trainer as well. Um, I'm one of many people who sat in offices who realized that wasn't their calling <laughs> and had one of those um, life experiences and I need to find a career that's a little bit more fulfilling. That's just me. Some people yeah. find fulfillment in tech and, and um, in offices. Um, I just wasn't. So that wasn't me. So um, I took the leap of faith and switched careers and pursued fitness full time. Part of my journey was when I broke out into the fitness industry, um, the pay, the income is significantly lower than tech money. Right? Yeah. When you're an entrepreneur, when you are going in anywhere but tech, um, you know, the disparity is pretty, pretty disparaging. Yes. Um, it took me a while, um, but it didn't take me too long to get up to the same income level as I was earning in tech. Um, but according to my colleagues who didn't come from business backgrounds or tech backgrounds, they were still financially struggling. It was really hard. So... I felt it was my personal social responsibility to put out some education out there to make a difference in the fitness industry and help people understand that there is a difference between um, revenue and actual income. Mm -hmm. And I was, uh, my heart really went out to a lot of my colleagues who were younger than me who were fresh out of college. In the United States specifically, we have a big problem with uh, student loan payments, yeah. um, finding jobs. Um, so a lot of them were burning out and they're talented, they're young, they're eager, they're excited. Um, but they have to leave Silicon Valley in order to make a living for themselves. So it's a really hard uh, uh, coming of age realization for them. Um, so when I did more research on what type of education is available in the industry, a lot of it is going to be in the sciences, um, the actual craft of being a personal trainer, which is right, and uh, sales and marketing, how to sell your services, how to get a client. But then that's all going into revenue and there's a disconnect when it comes to taxes and costs and the actual living expenses. So um, I just felt, you know, my unique voice, my unique background would be a great benefit to others. Um, and I, 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 I thought about my own personal brand. Who am I? I'm not just a personal trainer. I'm not just an entrepreneur. I'm not just an a, a MBA graduate student. I actually have a unique opportunity, and I want to capitalize on that and make the world a better place. So yeah. that's where I took my career. <laughs> that's really interesting. I mean, that's, a, that's quite an amazing story. I mean, I'm, I'm a fan of the, of the series Silicon Valley. You know, I'm sure you've watched yes. it. It's <laughs> yes. absolutely hilarious. <laughs> it's, it's, so it's, funny and very true. <laughs> it's very true. <laughs> <laughs> Coming from an insider, I'm sure that's like, okay, yeah. Um, it, I mean, it, someone it, on the outside is like, okay. <laughs> yep, yep. It is bad. It is sad and funny at all at the same time. 
<laughs> yeah, it's hilarious. I just I just watched the the end, the last episode where there were the rats and everything, and that is <laughs> completely hilarious. Oh my god, that's so funny. Yes, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's one of my favorite series. I'm probably going to go and watch it all over again, and you know, just yes. the whole how, how the whole thing played out. So yes, you have to. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, I think you're in a very interesting niche because I think it's not only very. Uh, uh, very, I mean, very much required financial literacy anywhere in the world, not just America. I think in in India mm-hmm. where I live, and anywhere in the world, we need financial literacy because we are not taught that in school. I mean, and that yes, should absolutely. be that should be an essential, uh, you know, skill to learn, right? In school, absolutely, absolutely. Finances and uh, you know how to do your finances. Okay, maybe when you go a little ahead and you get into a, a commerce degree and all then you learn how to, how to do that but that is something we should learn in school absolutely it's, you know so yeah i mean we're all going to graduate or many of us are going to graduate but we're all going to be book smart within our respective field and then we become employees we work for someone else but there's still that disconnect of how to pay loans or how to balance your checkbook or understanding your payments that goes into uh, public work so public yeah. services and taxes um it it gets it gets confusing. It gets challenging, and um, depending on your emotional capacity, it could be really disheartening. Also, so I see a lot of people scared to even admit that they don't know these things, yes. and yeah. timid and shy, um, and don't have the confidence to speak about their own personal finances when it's one of the biggest things that's holding them back from self actualization, from leading a fulfillment a fulfilled career, and and branching off on their own. And it's really sad. And I think. Um, actually, I do know part of my mission is to help build confidence. So this is what m- part of my brand is. I'm more than just helping you. I want to make sure that you feel confident looking at your own money, looking at and designing your own career, that it really speaks to you. It's, it's yeah. more philanthropic yeah. and it's more benevolent. Yes, that, that, oh, that's, a, that's a really good way to look at it. Because I think there's a lot of shame around money, you know. You know, and that comes from our families and comes from our backgrounds and comes from our childhood. So uh, that's a that's a that's a big hurdle to overcome when it comes to uh, actually really being willing to deal with our, our kind um uh you know kind of money issues. And I yes. I've gone through that. I've gone through that personally. So mm, because, me too. You know, childhood, <laughs> childhood issues and stuff like that. So yeah. you have to overcome that in order to be comfortable dealing with money. And I think that's a very good service you're providing. So what? Did, how did you? How did you pivot from the you know Silicon Valley kind of thing to the um, f- fitness literacy thing? You know, fitness financial literacy thing. I had to take when I was working in tech. It took me a good three years of soul searching to realize, mm-hmm. and a couple of events within the company. You know, I just one bad client after another, and like oh, I really don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> I really want to quit, but I didn't want to jump and switch careers with that. That would be a little too risky if I didn't have any safety net. So right. um, yeah. when I was networking within the fitness industry, um, an opportunity came about to be a program manager uh, uh, for one of the gyms I was actually working at. So I applied, I got the job, um, and that was the beginning of switching my career from uh, working in business and tech part-time, but pursuing fitness full-time. And I did that type of a, a balance for about um, three to four years. And then I realized in the fitness industry, um, though I was earning great money at that point, um, there's still something more. And I still had to pay attention to that, that there's still something at me and me that I want to give back. Um, of course, there's volunteering and, there, and there's going to be donating, but that wasn't my unique voice. And I think that in my heart, that's what it was missing. Um, so I started looking at what is the difference and how it can make my industry make a contribution um, that's really unique. And I had to sit on that for about a year or two. And that's when I realized, you know what? People have this great ambition of writing their own book. I might as well do it myself. I might as well do it myself. So that, I took that leap of faith and committed my year to writing a book. And I can't believe and I applaud anyone who wrote their own book. It is not for the pain of art. That is a long, long journey. <laughs> um, and I managed to do it. You know it very well as well. Um, and I finally accomplished that, got it launched on Amazon. And when I started, and during the process, when I started talking and sharing my idea and sharing what really spoke to me, I was dumbfounded by how many people uh, resonated with the idea. They were saying like, yeah, our industry as a personal trainer, I didn't know that. And they started opening up. They felt it was safe to start opening up about their own finances, their own struggles in making it into the industry. And that sparked an idea. Why don't I share it with people outside of the industry? So I met some um, people who are artists. Uh, I met some actors, people who are in the entertainment, people who were in psychotherapy. 
um, all these different industries were saying, yeah, when I graduated from my degree or I got a job, I have no idea how to do my taxes. I had no idea how to buy a home. I had no idea about investments or anything. So I was struggling as well. So there was this blanket theme across all industries that as a whole, as a world, we kind of need this education just as human beings, you know? Yeah. So that ended up adding on to my why I should be pursuing this yeah. um, was I have the larger goal and a larger mission that goes well beyond me or goes well beyond the industry. It goes beyond my colleagues. And I think this is going to actually be a movement. So I started networking with people on LinkedIn um, and just other people who are more financially focused. And they said, yeah, it is a big thing. We need to get this into schools. We need to impact uh, students. So all these reasons kept adding on to my why. Um, and I started moving forward. And before I knew it, I wasn't even looking back at my past anymore. It was, I have a mission. There's something um, bigger than me that I wanted to fill up. Yeah. I mean, that's, I think that's when uh, it uh, hits you that you can actually make a difference, right? Uh, when you mm -hmm. realize that it's so much bigger than you. And uh, when, I mean, when you go from just being there for yourself, existing on the planet for yourself to existing there, I mean, doing, contributing to giving back yeah. and contributing and doing stuff for others. So that's yeah. that. And I think that's that that also becomes part of your brand when you're reaching out to people and when you're, you know, putting out your message and your 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 uh, your information in your books. And absolutely. Whatever it is, right. It comes. Absolutely. Through. Yeah. When I started uh, thinking about my own brand and who I am, it was important to me. And it also it made a lot of sense that you, you'll go into social media and you see and especially in my industry, oh, this guy weight, uh, does weightlifting or this person does yoga or this person is super cardio. And they, they are their own brand to an extent. Like you can associate them with an activity. But as a user and a person who's on my Instagram, I don't see any benefit <laughs> for me. I see them associated with something. I see an association, but I don't have that emotional connection. I don't have that, that interpersonal relationship where I actually want to uh, reach out to that person and ask for help. Um, and so that was something that was important to me that I not only want to brand myself as having my unique voice and you understand who I am, but you also understand how he can help you and how we can help each other and how we can help and be kind to other people and help augment this uh, community at large. That's, that's a different perspective. You, I, you can relate to me offline as well, and I will still be that same brand. So. Yeah, that's that's great because that's that's so authentic and genuine, and you come across as genuine, and you want to come across as genuine, right? You don't want to be some right. kind of, and it, it's uh, I I think the the best brands are not all about you, like it's not all about me yeah. and how good I am and how strong I am and how you know whatever fit I am. It's about what can I do for you, you know? Absolutely, you know? absolutely. So, and, and um, it is important for brands and anyone who's thinking about um, their own unique voice, you really have to think about how is it going to help others? How are you going to be improving the world at large? Because that really relates to people and resonates with people on the emotional level. That's when you can cross industries. That's when you can cross boundaries. That's when you can cross countries, time zones. <laughs> yeah. Because we all relate on that uh, uh, emotional connection. I was like, yeah, I need that help too. And this person seems like a really genuine person. Let's connect. And that's a genuine, authentic connection, not just... Yeah, I know this person and, you know, he's informational and then that's it. Yeah, right. He, he, there, there's so many personal trainers out there, but there's only so many personal trainers who have unique voices who um, you would be genuinely interested in developing a relationship with. <laughs> yes, that's true. That's up. Listen to the channel WIIFM, What's In It For Me. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, absolutely. absolutely. You, we, we all have that frame too. Um, I come across people who are uh, really, um, they want to optimize their profile, they want to optimize their social media channels, and on their time, they're, they stress out so much about the keywords and their images and things like that, and I, and, and I coach them, and again, for my job in tech, I was actually building websites, I worked in search engine optimization, okay. so yes, theoretically, I understand and I can communicate well how to optimize all these different channels, but I also have to remind people, like, if you're developing your own brand, you also have to take your brand offline too <laughs> so don't get too caught up with the technicalities and the visibility online but you know in your heart when you actually talk to someone and you shake their hands are you still consistent with your voice you know mm -hmm. are you still a genuine person yes, <laughs> so that's going to be a part of branding if people forget. I, 
I think that I think that's a, that's a that's a brilliant point you made, Nelson. Because I a lot of people don't realize how important your brand is offline. You know, because you have to be the same person. People are looking at mm-hmm. something, and when they and when you come offline, a lot of people are like, "Oh my God, this this guy is completely different from what he seems like offline." You know, yeah. I'm mean, online, like you know, I mean, and uh, it's like a, a disconnect, and then they don't know how to deal with that. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> that kind of that kind of uh, destroys the kind the credibility and the trust that you build up. You know, online, so. Uh, you yeah. can't be a fake. You have to be the same person online as well as offline, and that's something that pe- many people forget when it comes to personal branding, right? Exactly, exactly. You have to be consistent, and 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 even then, that concept of consistency, people get too caught up. Like, am I saying the right words? Is this relationship going well? Like, man, just be authentic. Be genuine. That's it. It's really not hard. <laughs> come from the heart. <laughs> you know, yeah. the words will naturally come out. People will yeah. resonate with who you are. Rather than right. the keywords on your resume, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, besides the book, are you planning to come out with anything else? For instance, like a, a online course because that's big right nowadays. You know, yes. are you planning to start that? Mm, uh, I'm glad you're catching me at the beginning of this year because I have lots of plans, a lot of smart goals to accomplish this year. Mm. Um, my first one is basically in the personal training world. For every personal trainer to uh, recertify, keep their certification up, they have to recertify every two or three years, Mm -hmm. Um, but they have to accumulate a number of courses and units to prove that they were constantly learning. So not all educators in the personal training world can be in a position to be approved to offer those courses, but I am one of them. So my self-study course on my website um, uh, is offered to people who are certified through the National Academy of Sports Medicine, um, as well as AFA. Two large uh, certification organizations. So that's first course. Um, and over the next course, uh, I invite listeners to follow me because there's going to be webinars, there's going to be guest speaking events, as well as going to be increasing my travel engagements as well. And hopefully, I get to meet people uh, um, offline as well. Oh, yeah. um, so that's that's in the works. Um, I love meeting podcasters and getting a message out there. So thank you for your help, Ria. <laughs> Um, so uh, it's, it's a whole community and there's so, so such a large, wonderful network of people who generally want to help other entrepreneurs as well, uh, cause we all have good missions, um, as well as for other plans. Um, yeah, one day I will release a, a revision of my book, um, and go into more technical details to help, um, people understand the whole wide world of investments as well, passive income, uh, uh looking at real estate, but taking those concepts, simplifying them, but specifically marketed to the personal trainer or the fitness professional. Right. It's a different language. Yes, so if yes, yes. any listener who is not in the, who's really good at their respective profession, you can also admit within your profession, there's a particular language that you know, that Absolutely. you know you're talking to another professional within your industry, Absolutely. only they would know that verbiage. So. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I get that. As a, as a, as a, as a, someone who's into SEO myself, I know that it, oh. it differs. Right, it differs from yeah. each from each niche. The kind of uh, keywords that you use, the kind of search terms that you use, and that's I mean, I mean that, that's part of the language, right? That they mm-hmm. that you have to think mm-hmm. of when you come when you you know coming when you're doing your branding, and uh, yeah. so, so of course that uh, that's something you come across in everyday life. But are there so are there any ways to actually you know if you if you need to if someone needs to. Uh, really get down to that uh, when it comes to writing their copy or writing their stuff. Are, are there any tips you can offer for, you know, figuring out that? Uh, for their own website or for their own branding? Yeah, for the branding, for their website, for, you know, putting out uh, information or their copy or whatever. So, I mean, of course, you're, oh, you're, yes. you're, yeah, you're using those, yeah. um, you're using that language. So you, you already know how it works. So can you offer yeah. tips to my audience? Um, feel, one, feel free to reach out to me. Um, my email is nelson at coachnellitoriano.com. Um, visit coachnellitoriano.com for, for more information as well. But um, you will notice some of the, the, in my opinion, some of the most um, authentic, genuine brands have a story. And especially if you yourself, you're a person, you are your own brand and you're marketing yourself, understand your background understand um, your triumphs, understand your struggles, understand how to best communicate that so it resonates emotionally um, yes. and people can connect with you. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. Understand your why. So when you start fine tuning and crafting your story and how your journey got you to where you are and where you're going, um, immediately people resonate. Um, 
then start thinking about that, okay, how does this story resonate within the context of what I'm trying to accomplish and within the industry and within my intended audience? But you always have to first start off with your why. You always have to start off with from within and trust me, any listener, people will resonate with who you are. They may not even be upfront with their own struggles and their triumphs or what their needs are, but a lot of times you, if you just speak, people will automatically think you're magnetic. Um, so always start with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the story, right? The story and mm-hmm. with, like you said, your why. Because uh, yes, I, I mean, I, I last I spent kind of some time last year getting to my why and that kind of helps me clarify a whole lot of things. You know, it clarifies your entire life and your purpose and, you know, yeah, you and, your, to do that. and your passion and your empathy and your, your sense of contribution, your self-actualization, all of those things. It doesn't feel like a career anymore. It's, it's you. It's a part of you. And, yeah. and, and the amount that you can give out to the world is significantly larger than if you were forced to do a job. <laughs> so it's a different experience altogether. <laughs> oh, believe me, I know, I know what you're talking about. And because in India, most people are like that. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure you've met a lot of Indians in Silicon Valley and you know what their struggles are. So, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> the job working the job that you, your parents want you to do and you know and your family yes they say, oh wow this guy's working in silicon valley and he's making so much money and stuff like that but yeah, yeah. there's so much more to life and there's so and, and people are so much more complex um and there's and you think in that regard there's a lot of needs to be met the world, yeah, world yeah. needs you to be your your genuine authentic brand yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that that's that's a lovely my message to get across, Nelson. What's the so what's what's the what's the plan for this year? What what are you planning to get done? You said you've got a whole bunch of things that you're planning out, uh, besides the courses and stuff like that. I got the courses, um, uh, more speaking engagements. I actually have. Um, another startup company, two startup companies. So another startup company is working with physicians and getting exercise, actual personal training sessions to be uh, physician prescribed. So right now, no physician can actually prescribe you exercises. Usually oh. in, a, in the United States, they prescribe you medicine, actual right. pills or any right. type of ointments or anything, but, um, but they will verbally make the recommendation you need to exercise more for a healthier mm-hmm. lifestyle. But we want mm-hmm. to Go through a lot of red tape, um, and there's a lot of uh, um, things that happens behind the scenes. But in our hearts, as a fitness professional, as fitness professionals, we know one of the best ways to maintain a healthy lifestyle is just to get up from the couch and just exercise. So we're trying to make that concept, that mentality, an actual prescription. So that's another startup company. And my yeah. third startup company is looking at my investment. So I have a real estate uh, investment company, and so I'm accumulating my assets under that. That's my inspiration of coming out with a second book is showing uh, personal trainers and fitness professionals and basically anyone how to develop passive income so you're not so stressed out about money. Money will just naturally happen and uh, be deposited so you can maintain a lifestyle so that you can work on uh, more benevolent philanthropic things that really speak to your heart. Yeah, so that's about financial independence, basically becoming financially yeah. independent so that you can focus on what your passion is and uh, while, while your basic needs are taken care of, right? Exactly, exactly. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> I know I've been studying all this stuff myself. So I, 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 I had to go through my own journey to get to where I am, you know. So Yes. Uh, yeah. So, but um, that, that's, that's great that you're doing so much stuff. And I think that the physician thing is very important because, um, uh, but won't you, have, won't you require some laws to be passed to make that uh, reality? Uh, there's a lot of red tape within the uh, the legal and the insurance portion of it. So it's yeah. been a project that me and my colleagues have been working on for, gosh, I want to say we're going on our fourth or fifth year. Um, and there's a the whole structure within a hospital, for example, uh, very convoluted and a lot of uh, movement within the organization. Not necessarily mm-hmm. attrition, um, but depending on the way the medical industry is moving, some people will be a director, some people is going to be a different regional manager. Um, so there's a lot of moving pieces. <laughs> so it takes, it's, it's not an easy feat, but oh, we know yeah. it is um, a definite need within the world just to uh, move away from alleviating a lot of your pain and symptoms for, with Western medicine and yeah. just getting up and getting exercise, you know, taking a walk. Um, yeah. Yeah. In the United States, we have a huge obesity problem. But really, the culprit is people being inactive. They don't necessarily need medicine. It's just, you know, getting up and being inspired that, hey, movement actually feels good. You know, it's not a difficult concept. So we want to standardize that and make it uh, uh, available for more people. 
Yeah, so I think your the main hurdle will be the in, insurance companies. I I don't know un, unless they are very happy about it uh, and they they get it passed very quickly. You know, so yeah, because it will yeah. reduce it will reduce their costs if people are working on, of course. So yeah, <laughs> I exactly. guess they will be happy about that. Yeah. So exactly. anyway, I wish you I wish you great I wish you great success with that with all all your ventures. And we're going to have to wrap up the call a little early because I've got another call coming up. So no problem. Uh, but that's great, Nelson. Let's con- connect and let's keep stay in touch. And I, I, I'm really looking forward to seeing your courses and uh, all the stuff that you're coming out with this year. So I'm going to thank stay. you so much. Yeah. So just and if you have any links to send me links to so that I can add them in the description, uh, just mm-hmm. send them across to me by email and I will put them there. Okay. So Absolutely. Stuff. Yeah. All the stuff that um, we talked about today. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Nelson. Thank you for making Thank time. <laughs> okay, bye. Yes. Have yeah. a good day. Yeah, bye. How did you like that interview? Do you have any questions you'd like me to ask my next guest? Do post them in the comments below.